Hey everyone, and welcome to my 7.4 HC Logic Series videos for beginners, uh, sponsored by PCB Way. Now, as I go through this, just know that you can do uh, any of the things that I'm showing on breadboard, but if you want to have a little bit easier time with your experimentation, then uh, you can go and download these boards I've had made. Today's video is about the 74HC00, and let's take a look at what that is. The 74HC00 is a quad NAND gate. Now, that means it has four independent NAND gates, and a NAND gate that's spelled N-A-N-D uh, is basically an AND gate, A-N-D, um, with an inverter at the end. So if you already know what an AND gate does, all you have to do is invert the output and that gives you a NAND gate. So you see here the, the, the names of the inputs are 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, etc, etc, and the outputs are uh, 1Y, 2Y, 3Y, 4Y. All you really have to do to understand a NAND gate is look at the function table and all this is on the data sheet which is linked below. So we're looking at the inputs here a and B, which is this one and this one, on any of these, they're all independent. If you put a low signal on both A and B, your output is a high. A low and a high on any of the inputs will also give you a high on the output. The only way to get a low output is to have both inputs high. And again, if you checked out my video on the AND gates, linked in the description, you'll see that that's basically the opposite of an AND gate. So an AND gate, when the two inputs are high, you'll get out a high, but this one, when the two inputs are high, you'll get out a low. Flipping to the absolute maximum ratings in the data sheet, uh, you'll see that very important here is that your continuous current uh, for the output is a uh, plus or minus 25 milliamps. So you gotta be very careful not to overload the outputs, you could burn out your chip. That means that if you are just running LEDs, there should be no issue, uh, little LEDs that is as indicators. But if you're using high current devices as an output, you make sure to run through a transistor instead of using the output directly. Now these things do run between two to six volts. Uh, here it says it'll tolerate up to seven, but all my tests are gonna be run at five volts. Let me give you a small guided tour through the board. So first and foremost, on my board there is good labeling. So you'll see the individual labels on the pins directly beside the chip. Also, I put on the truth table so you can quickly reference it while you're working. You've got a few options for input. I did put solder pads on either side here, but I also have room for these ter screw terminals. Um, but if you don't solder the screw terminal, you have a nice through hole to run permanent wires in there as well. The inputs are also clearly labeled as well as the outputs. And you have these output LEDs with 1K resistors just to make sure that they're nice and visible but don't draw too much current. You also have 10K resistors as pull down and 10K resistors as pull up. And you can just flip these little uh, jumpers to one side or the other to have the pull up or pull down action, as well as two pin headers for each output. So you can daisy chain to the same chip by putting a wire from here to here, or to daisy chain to another board, another logic chip. And let's not forget, I put some mounting holes so you can secure this to your prototyping surface, make little rubber feet for it, or whatever you wanna do. Time to see this thing in action. Here we have the board powered up at five volts, and my read and power supply is reporting zero amps of current, and that's because we're not pulling enough current for it to show up. It's a very low power device. Here's the first demonstration I can show you. You see how the uh, outputs are just changing? All I'm doing is I'm poking the backside here and bridging the pull up to the pins or the pull down to the pins, which is affecting the readings. That's because the inputs to this chip do not like to be floating, and that's why I set this up to have little jumpers in order to pull up or pull down so that we can have a decisive on or off. Now there's no way I can make one Y change just by poking around. And I can also change it 
to a low output. See? The 2, 3, and 4 are changing, but not 1. So if you're doing this on a breadboard, make sure you use resistors to tie the legs either high or low. Don't just leave them floating, you might get unexpected results. So here I have my input box hooked up. I've got all of the inputs pulled to low on this board, which means I don't have to do it on this input box, just like you wouldn't have to do it if you had this board and you were using, let's say, an Arduino. I made sure that the power supply that is powering this with 5 volts is also powering this with 5 volts, otherwise you'd have to tie the grounds together. Always when you link circuits together, you need to tie them together so they're both referenced to the same point. And I have the inputs 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B on this orange, blue, white, and green wire. They're all pulled to high, which gives us a low state. These here have their inputs still pulled to ground, therefore they are in a high state. So now we can start experimenting. So basically we know uh, 1A and 1B, if any one of these is pulled low, the LED should turn on. And so that's pulled low, the LED is on. Back to high, LED is off. This one low, LED is on. Back to high, LED is off. Same thing with these two. If one or the other go low, the LED turns on back to high, they're off. If both go low, the LED also turns on, and so our truth table is accurate. Now let's have some fun and show where this board really shines, is if we take the output of the first stage and affect 1A, or sorry, 3A, and the output of the second stage and affect 3B. Now, if both these things go high, it'll feed that signal back into the third stage, and this one should go low. So how do we get these high? Well, we flip any of the inputs of any of the stages, and that'll bring that one high. And if I pull this one down, this one will go high, and this one will turn off. Pretty cool. You can affect an LED using another one. This is the beauty of having four independent gates in the 74HC00. And now I've tied the output of 3 to the input of 4. So if this 3 goes high, this 4 should go low. So let's see. And there we go. Make all sorts of weird and crazy combos out of these switches. Pretty cool, huh? And so that's it. All you have to do is learn how to use a single NAND gate, then provide a 5 volt and a ground to the chip, and you have use of all four NAND gates on this chip. Of course, like I said, you can do this on breadboard, but then when you start adding resistors to ground, it starts getting a little bit convoluted and a little bit hard to follow. I find these PCB way boards to be a lot simpler if you're just learning, although it is a little bit more expensive than using a breadboard. So the choice is yours. Um, the links to all this is in the description below. And the link to the kit where all these 74 HC chips come from are also in the link. But more importantly, I want you to go down to the comments and let me know what is not clear about this series so I can make improvements to it in the future. Other than that, just uh, make sure you're subscribed for the rest of the videos or go into the playlist linked in the description and go watch the rest on this series. Thanks for watching.